everybody and welcome back to another episode with Zoe and Jenna at the table. This is our prophetic podcast and we just really are passionate about talking with people, talking with each other (laughs) around all things relating to God and how he's speaking, how he's pouring out a spirit on uh, the world right now and really opening eyes and ears everywhere. So we're so excited that you're here with us and especially excited today because we have got a wonderful guest on who we're so excited about. Matt Beckenham is somebody really special to Zoe and I. Uh, Matt and his wife Trish are the pastors of Haberfield Baptist Church in Sydney and they have got um, a whole range of other things that they are involved in including their prophetic mentoring as well, which is what um, actually um, connected us with Matt and Trish in the first place. So you're in for a treat. Matt is wonderful. He carries the heart of God and the grace of God. Every word that comes from his mouth is spoken in love, and you're going to hear that today in our interview with him. So grab your cup of tea and enjoy. And today we have got one of our most favorite people <laughs> who um, really we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now if it wasn't for you, Matt. So Matt Beckenham, yeah. um, you're like a pioneering, um, amazing, wonderful person. <laughs> I didn't word that well, but that's what we're going to go with. So we just want to say a massive welcome to, the, to you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks to you both as well. Like, and again, meeting extraordinary humans from around the world. Uh, You guys were two of the very first who sort of said, yeah, I'd love to be able to connect in and do this thing called prophetic mentoring and uh, see the way that you guys have picked it up, how that you guys listen to the father and then you just move with him. Uh, For me, it's it's a beautiful thing to watch. Mm. Oh gosh, it is so good. It's just so good to be here. And, um, the the presence of God is already in the room and I can just feel the joy in my heart and the peace of just being in the space with you Matt and really we just want to welcome you and honor you for um for just coming in and having a chat with us because we know that what you're going to land on us today is going to shift not only our hearts but those who are listening because what you carry is is a breakthrough that I see to help people see their purpose, their potential, their identity, and the destiny that Christ has placed from them. I just know, um, yeah, I know what you've done in my life. And so I'm excited (laughs) for everyone else who gets to like, just hear your voice for a moment and um, yeah, encounter something that you carry. So bless you. Yeah. Mm, So so (laughs) for those who don't know, um, you're in for a real treat. So Matt and his beautiful wife, Trish, are the pastors of Haberfield Baptist Church, which is in Sydney. But it actually kind of feels a bit funny um, even describing it that way because the, since lockdown, really, isn't it? Matt, that um, The church has gone online and, you know, there is just this community that you have built from your home in Sydney that has, re- like, you have people in the European parts of the world getting up at 4 a.m to come and join you at church (laughs) (laughs) yep that's committed (laughs) isn't it it is and I just think you know and it just speaks volumes of what you're doing something's it really pioneering is the way to describe it you're just Mm. paving a way of a new way of looking at church and it's so exciting and Mm. um and we know we're going to get into it a little bit and ask you about it later but you also are um the pioneer of greater things international which we want to have you explain to us later as well so Mm. let's unpack a few things (laughs) let's do it (laughs) let's unpack a few things well jenna i've just got to think about when i first saw matt matt i just have to tell you the story so I mean, it's way back, I think about two and a half years ago, I saw you on Lana Voss's, um, one of her live videos. Now, I mean, part of my story, and you know that I was new to understanding what this word prophetic means. I was like, what? My experience of a prophetic person was somebody who came to my church once a year, gave a prophetic word to somebody if they were very lucky and they got some encouragement and it was for that one person on a one day. And I don't know, that's just what I understood from it. And then God started shaking and moving my heart and uh, then I saw you on Lana versus live videos Lana is epic as well amazing <laughs> guys also go and follow Lana she's great and um you did something you did an activation and you asked us to see Jesus in the room 
And I was like, what? Can we do that? <laughs> can we do that? Like, can we see Jesus here with us? And um, oh, you'll hear some of that through our podcast, but that's kind of where God's taken me on that journey of being able to see, you know, see him um, as part of the language of how he speaks to me. And so, um, Matt, I'll never forget that. And you're like, you asked us to see where Jesus was in the room and where he might be at that stage. And that was just like, I have got to know more about this. So that's why <laughs> I had to find, find you. And, um, you know, and that's, that's um, you are a man of the presence of God. Like, you know how to lead us so well into that place. Oh, just tell us what it means to you to come into his presence. Maybe if you can, and I mean, <laughs> really, how could you summarize that? But. Well, I think for me, the presence of God is something that's often been talked about in church experiences mm. and often talked about from the front of churches. Mm. But my passion is to bring that presence to you. It's to your heart, your home, your situation, your, your story, uh, some of the hurts and traumas of life, the parts of your life that need healing. I see the presence of God as uh, something utterly profound that changes right down to the DNA of our lives. Uh, I see it manifested in love. Uh, and for me, the manifest presence of God is the love of God. And I have watched love heal, deliver, free, empower. It's just the most extraordinary concept of the kingdom. And so it's, it's bringing that to bear in the moment. I think I've grown up believing that things like the presence of God are more like a heaven thing that I would get to once I, I died. And as I got a bit older, it's just like, I'm not sure that's good enough. Like, I don't want to live my whole life hoping that that's the case. I want to believe it. And, um, and so, yeah, so for me, it's just been this hunt and adventure for what the presence of God is. And the more that I've sought for it, the more I've discovered and the more that I've seen that every human has made is made for it. And the it's the greatest privilege of my life is to watch people come into that place of, of going, the presence of God is right here in this room. There is nothing that separates me from the Father's love. I love doing it in community where you see the youngest in the room, right to the oldest in the room, encountering the same presence. And like uh, you guys said, it's around the world. So we can be doing it right here. And you guys in New Zealand are feeling the presence of the Father just pouring over you. And um, it's, it's a concept that has shifted and changed the way that I look at the kingdom of God, the way that I do church, as you guys have seen that for yourselves firsthand. And I just really sense that there's something on this for the season that we're in uh, and for the great shift that the world has had happen to it through COVID. Um, and I think the Lord's been preparing us for this season itself. And so I'm really excited to see where we go. So I feel like I've opened Pandora's box a bit, and uh, if I can use that phrase. Uh, and there is just, it just, there's just more like, you know how of how long have we been praying for the more lord but we just didn't understand what we were praying for and mm. now i feel like he's like okay let me just show you what more looks like and uh, more love this world cannot get enough of and um he's just he's placed it in us and for me it's just one of the greatest privileges and honors of my life is to love and to love well oh my goodness and if you know I mean, I don't want to overstate our appreciation of everything you're doing there, but that's just something that you really do. So, and you know that, you know that you love well because it's a gift that he's giving. And it's also something that you've spent your life pressing into and mm. intentionally choosing to do. And I love that you just said that um, there's just more <laughs> with the present, there's no, that whole thing yeah. of Pandora's box. On you, and it's like that thing of the more, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. So, mm. hey, that, yeah. Do yeah. you think? Do you think that for you, it has come with a certain level of, um, like, how much of this has had to be? You've had to let go of expectation, and how scary has that been? <laughs> like, how scary <laughs> is that to do? Yeah, it's it's huge. Like it is. 
been been raised in the church and so this is where trish and i have two different experiences which is really cool because she wasn't raised in the church and i was <clears throat> so religion became a thing that i like i was spoon fed as a kid and i didn't know any different and so when you don't know any different you just expect what you've got is right and it's not until you get older that you start asking questions and and that part of the discovery and this is the question um the permission to ask questions is so profound for me uh, and for both of you you know that whatever question you have you have permission to ask it and it's not that i've got all the answers but it's that place when a person knows that they can ask a question they know that they can grow if you stop asking questions you stop growing if you stop growing you stop transforming and if you stop transforming the fruit of the holy spirit seems to become very rare in, in your life and so for me, the big, the big massive turnaround is when my marriage broke down and for Trish and I, we, uh, we didn't separate, but I went out of ministry for a season. Um, we went into counseling and we had some pretty massive choices to make in that season and time. Um, it would have been, one option was to, to walk away from, from marriage and family. Uh, but for Trish and I, that was never really an option. Um, and so in, in, in it, there was a real breakdown of of who I was um, as well. I discovered who I was. Uh, I discovered who I wasn't. Uh, I discovered that my actions had led me to uh, for people to believe who I was, but I just knew that there was something deeper. And and so through the process of, of counselling and just so much of grace being given and offered in those places to me, uh, I discovered something of the love of God that I that you can't learn in religion. Religion will never it will tell you that you're loved but relationship will show you that you're loved and so for me it's been a, a real series of a turnaround from a place of uh, theology and religion into a place of understanding my identity and understanding the the design that the father has for my life for your life jenna for your life zoe and now i'm just not prepared to put up with what religion wants to offer us as god i just the best case that religion can give to us is to say, hey, God is occasionally found here. Um, but for me, the relationship stuff, this is Jesus. Like he was found in the temple, but more often he was found anywhere else. And uh, when he was found, he loved. He didn't. The only places he gave theology were at the times to the religious leaders and to the people he gave presence. He gave love. He gave the power of God. Um, and he gave the the place of identity and that for me is is profound in all of it so in my lowest state that's where i discovered my identity and in the lowest state um where nobody really wants to be there and really it's it kind of sucks but inside of that place i discovered that in the dark valley that the father stands beside me and, and when you find that you will discover that he doesn't stand beside you to discipline you or to hurt you he stands beside you to heal you so yeah so that's a long answer to the question there jenna but for me it's profound that what he has done in my life has restored my identity has shown to me uh, who i am and uh, just the power that i walk in and the authority that the father has called me to walk in i mean <laughs> I just don't, I'm trying to, you know, I take notes as people are talking and I just can't write. I just want to <laughs> transpose everything that you're saying there. This is, thank you for sharing your story so vulnerably, run vulnerably. <laughs> um, because mm -hmm. I think that you've touched on something there that, and Zoe, I don't know if you've got some thoughts on this too, but you've touched on something there that I just <clears throat> personally feel is, massive when people are new to the thought that God could be speaking to them and that why do we you know we just I don't think it's just me or just you or just you Zoe that feel like if God was to say something to me he's going to condemn and and bring up the things I'm doing wrong and correct me <laughs> you know and and like Zoe said at the beginning how, you know your experience Zoe of like the, the prophet would come and you'd sit mm. there waiting for a word but we've talked about this before my experience has been different where often I was the one that always got the word I always got called out and 
and the Roman people. And it always terrified me because I thought, what is this person about to expose about me in front of everybody? Because I, you know, and that was something that I have had to work through that. And it's what you just touched on there, that God isn't, when he's speaking to us, he's, he's not coming to you in your lowest place to condemn you and to say, well, look at what you have done and <laughs> made a mess of here. He's come to you to show you that grace and look at the difference that that's made to your life. Yeah. Mm, come on. Yeah, 100%, Jenna. Mm. And this is the thing. We either believe God is love or we don't. Wow. And like that's 1 John 4, like God is love. It cannot be more definitive than that. And so therefore, everything he does operates from that place. Now, in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, the Apostle Paul, when he talks about prophecy, he says that it has to build and courage and comfort. Mm. And so even in my own community or our own community, you guys are a part of it, you know, that it's um, these are the ways that we frame up the prophetic. Mm. It's straight from the Bible. It's straight out of Paul's own words to the Corinthian church. He says in that same uh chapter if you don't have the gift of prophecy ask god for it mm. and he's basically saying crave it why because we can all hear god speak i think we are designed to hear god speak i think when we're formed in our mother's womb we are designed to hear him speak and see him work and i think when we are born religion has told us we can't religion mm. has told us it's too scary religion has told us that we will get it wrong and I, i'm so um fixated on this concept because I think that religion's uh, phrase is something like we're always going to uh, end up on the side of erring rather than the side of hearing. Mm. And uh, we get so scared wow. of getting God's word wrong that we never risk getting it right. And like, what sort of relationship is that? Like if, if the three of us had a relationship where we just expected to misunderstand each other all the time, <laughs> like <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. And the one who creates us, he doesn't create us with the thought in his brain that, yeah, I'm going to create these people to misunderstand me all the time. And so I want to reverse that. I, I want to show people our divine design that was in Eden, that we were created to walk in the cool of the evening with the Father. And if that's true, which I believe it is, then we should be able to do it today. And that that's not just a one prophet who turns up once a year to drop it a divine word on us. It's like every moment we are together, the Father is speaking. And if we're willing to listen, we will hear, we will understand, we will discern, and we will be the prophetic. We will be the prophets. We will open our mouths and things will flow from them. Mm -hmm. And for me, that doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. A child comes out of the, the womb screaming. What is it doing? It's calling life. Mm -hmm. And it's letting itself be known that life has come. These are the moments of God speaking. And if we minimize that, if we ignore that, we're just ripping ourselves off. Mm, come on. Oh gosh, this is so, oh, so powerful. And I think that's just the permission that you give Matt as people come into an environment, you know, and, and I just love that you're enabling us to take this kind of message and others to say, come on, you can do this. You're hearing God's first. You actually, you actually are already hearing him. Let's help you recognize where you're hearing him and become aware, become awake to what he is actually saying to you because he is speaking. He's always speaking and he's always drawing you into a place of um of love and into a place of identity and um I think that's what we're finding Jenna and I we love doing our mentoring because that's the cool thing is that we're like which is it just blows our mind every time we see somebody on and they're like they start prophesying or speaking a word and they're like oh I did it and it's like it's you know because it just flows yeah. you know it flows from our heart of of love and um and it, it's so powerful. And Matt, I just think I was um just had the privilege of being in church on the couch on Sunday. And um one of the young children prophesied and he kept on saying, There's a the shield is big. It's a big shield. Jesus has a big shield around you. <laughs> it's a big shield. And you know what? I just oh I was lying in bed last night and I was just like, having a moment, yes, you do. And like about to get in prayer, sometimes you're feeling like, okay, I'm gonna pray Psalm 91. Some, and I just thought, I just that word came back into that little boy saying, God's got a big shield. It's a big shield. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. We're fine. God's got a big shield. And, you know, out of the mouth of children, I love how you 
oh gosh it's just so good like the value of the voice and the value of the heart that that flows and I know that's you know for you guys listening out there this is not just for me this is not just for Matt and it's not just for Jenna but like it's for you too you are already hearing God's voice in your life you're seeing him at work in everything you do Mm. he loves you he really loves you and he is not going to stop chasing after you to to catch your heart right mm. yeah I love um I love that what you just shared Zoe about that church on the couch that's Matt's um the have a feel Baptist that's what they call their church online on Sundays on zoom and um and it's something fun that I've learned through you guys as well Matt is that um you take interruptions really like fun but seriously so (laughs) if um and this is something that I think we all can incorporate into our lives if you you know if we're in the middle of a conversation with a friend and then our phone dings as we say something you know you could just that happens all the time but Mm. we can just write that off but you've taught us to just really take note of what just happened or if somebody's pouring their heart out about something and then a kid starts laughing in the background somewhere it's like okay God's wanting to bring some sort of joy here (laughs) these little interruptions that are just part of everybody's everyday life that we just coast through and don't put two thoughts towards you could you see as things that ways of God getting our attention and speaking (laughs) yeah absolutely I think at times particularly with church we take ourselves so seriously Mm -hmm. that we think if we interrupt the person at the front we've just created the worst sin that you could possibly do. And as a parent myself, like when your kids are uh, are vocal or noisy or disruptive, normally what happens is the parent feels shame or that feels, oh no, I've got to get my child out of here. Oh no. And I think if we're creating services that promote shame, that we're creating the wrong service. It's that simple. It's that like, is really being interrupted that bad in a conversation where a child just wants to be heard? No. Absolutely not. And so for me, it's taking myself a little less serious, like even as a pastor, like in my younger days of doing it, you're up there, you're preaching away and somebody falls asleep in front of you. You go, oh, no, I'm preaching really bad. And I take it personal and God's like, no, the dude's just tired. How about you get over yourself? And we start thinking a little bit more about what's happening. And maybe God's telling me to preach rest into the into the brighter Christ right now. Mm, and so for wow. me, it's staying present. Like you got to stay present with people. Like that's what the father did with us. That's what Jesus did with us. Like Jesus is on his way to heal a, a, a sick girl and a Roman centurion interrupts him and says, dude, can you heal my servant? And Jesus is like, yeah, I'll do that too. And again, he stays present with the moment. He yeah. doesn't mind the interruption. No. And then I have this, and as you guys know, a belief that when our world is interrupted, the father is actually trying to say something profound to us. Yeah. And so I'm looking for whatever that is. And so whether it's a plane flying over my house to the point that it messes up the recording that I'm doing, <laughs> or it's a church bell from the church opposite us that, <laughs> that gongs in the middle of when you're preaching. <laughs> I just think that there's, these are times where the father's like, I'm not that serious. <laughs> I'm actually not and I actually want to have some fun with you and um, I found that like even on Sunday with that little boy that was the first time he came to church with his mom wow. very first time and after it his mom sends me a message and said my two kids have never ever done that in any expression of church wow and so his his older sister is prophesying and he's prophesying and then she sends me this text and I hope this is okay to say this uh, on, a, on the podcast, but she says, I, I kind of took a deep breath because usually his language goes to, to poops and farts. And uh, I said, even if he did, we would have been okay with that conversation. That's right. <laughs> I love it so much. And I mean, let's face it, little boys, what are we, what are we 90% of the time going to be talking about? <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, well, well, you can you can let her know that um, next time you message her that his message helped a woman in New Zealand yeah. go to sleep in peace. Wow! I will do that. I will and do I love I love mm. what you just shared there because um, Zoe and I go to the same church here in New Plymouth, and one thing that put you know puts another level and element to this, and I know it will be the same in your physical church too when you're together, mm. because we are so fortunate that our um, church here is like this as well and we have people come with their families and 
they cannot believe you know one of the things that they say is it just feels like home here and they mm. cannot believe that their children are not told to be quiet <laughs> we you know so the, the person will be speaking giving the message or um you know worship will be happening it'll be a really beautiful holy quiet instrumental moment and then three children will start playing tag right across the front in front of everyone and screaming and yelling and it just it actually does the opposite like you're saying to what you would expect it brings this it, it's like a tangible feeling of family and of love and of full acceptance that actually whoever you are if you're the homeless person that's just come in and caused a bit of a scene which also happens because we're right in town <laughs> <laughs> you know yep. or if you're the child that doesn't know any better and you're just actually having a great time we're all part of this and welcome so that's yeah how incredible that's so cool oh, I love that Jenna thanks and I hope you you're hearing this today um guys that um the the permission and also the new season that we're in and what we're what we're walking into and you know I was talking about what's been in the past and that is in the past and God's what God's doing now is completely new nothing of that is I regret any of how things have been I'm just grateful for where mm. we're stepping into the new and what God's leading to us in this season and so maybe you're in that place of like asking questions too well yeah let's be open to what God's doing and and I'm um, in in this new place so talking about new Matt, to wrap things up as we head to the end of this but you have something exciting that you've been working on and I know you're going to be stepping into it and greater ways <laughs> in yep. the next season and it's called greater things international um this is just an amazing ministry that you have do you want to just give us a little snippet of your heart for greater things international yeah sure Zoe. well part of the the next step is actually stepping out of uh leading haberfield baptist church as well which um like i've been here for most of my life but in pastoral ministry for 19 years and um, over the last couple of years, the Father's really been leaning on Trish and I with this concept of the new. And uh, it's probably earlier this year, I, I was sitting with Jesus and he, and he said, if you're going to hold on to the new, you've got to be prepared to let go of the old. You can't hold both. And uh, for a person who's grown up in a place and a location where this has been your life, it started a process within me of unpacking what is the old? And, and what is the new? And this is no small conversation that, that runs through my mind or my heart. And, um, and so uh, we decided to start this, uh, this business on called Greater Things, which is wanting to empower people's identity. Mm. And not only can you hear the voice of God, but once you know who you, once you can hear, then you can know who's speaking to you. And if you can know who's speaking to you, you can trust the voice that's there. Mm. And so it's not just hearing the voice of God, it's actually learning to trust it. And any voice you can trust, you can love. And so uh, in discovering this, it, it's like the Father's just showing to us more and more so um, what we believe that God has called us into to do. So Trish is a trained counsellor. Mm. And I've been doing deliverance ministry in church and healing ministries for, for a couple of decades. And we see these two worlds colliding. And so often the church has separated these two things out. But we want to see these things working powerfully uh, together. Uh, we believe that, that we are one in body, mind and spirit. And um, we want to be able to uh, really sit and work with people in, in those areas. And so we've started a, a number of courses um, in doing this in uh, prophetic mentoring which is again helping people here uh, we run a course for pioneers and believing that every one of us are pioneers we just need to discover our uniqueness uh, i'm doing a course on dream interpretation at the moment which um, uh, it's the first time we've run it and it's going to be one we're going to run obviously a number of times because it's just it's another part of I think it's a part of the church that's been ignored and it's been ignored at our loss. Um, the Bible is so full of the concept of God speaking in our dreams and we just go, yeah, maybe. Oh, uh, and you, you guys know Courtney, uh, she sort of tapped me on the shoulder and said, can we teach something? Can we do something? And, um, and, uh, and, and she has such a passion for this too. And so we're just about to finish a group of 20 uh, dreamers that all dream uniquely and beautifully and hear the voice of God and and so we're wanting to empower communities and like even when we step out of Haberfield like next year we want to continue in an online community for 
uh, forum uh, where we can actually drop in on some of the locations, i.e. New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Feel free. <laughs> <laughs> And just hang out with you guys in a way of what's God saying and doing, what are you dreaming, um, and mm. just wanting to partner with people who want to discover the, the Father's heart. And so for Trish and I, it's all about the love of God. Like we want to see people uh, immersed in this love. Uh, it's it's drawing people away from religion. Um, it's very much wanting to help people see that everything that the Father's poured out through to us through Jesus is available here. We want to show people their original design um, and just how beautifully and wonderfully they've been made. Uh, we want to show them how the Father sees them and just empowering all of those places. So healing is very much a part of what we do and we want to see people heal from trauma. Uh, we want to see people um, heal from all kinds of things that occur in our lives and then just value that person as well. So it's exciting days and we're really looking forward to seeing what God does through it. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Well, we are just so cheering you on and championing and just cannot wait to hear the stories and the testimonies of people that, because, you know, even just that very final thing you said there about, we want to see people healed. I just, you know, we have this picture in our heads of what healing looks like. And a lot of people know my story as well. That's something I'm really, really wanting in my life. And God just has been speaking. It's not, it doesn't look like how you think. You know, the healing that makes the difference is the healing of our spirit. <laughs> and mm-hmm. we're all, you know, of our inside that actually, like you shared at the beginning with your story, that it actually just gets us to the end of ourselves and um, and lets God right on in there, a full handover. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I, so thank, thank you, Matt. And, you know, I just am thinking that there were two things that you said, and I just want to, um, I mean, not challenge, but I want to put out there for those of you listening just I encourage you to take some time to think of what Matt's shared here it's just such deep wisdom and revelation and um, I know it's going to bring breakthrough but two things that Matt said was that within um, your own story Matt you discovered who you were but you also discovered who you weren't and I think that if you can take some time over this next week, maybe today, you know, don't put it off. Just spend some time sitting and just asking Jesus, asking Holy Spirit to show you who you are and um, and by default, who you're not as well. Because um, I think that once we know who we're not, then obligation and compulsion fall off of us. And actually we get to do things out of love like Matt's talking about. And then... Just the second thing you said there, Matt, was, um, you know, you felt like Jesus asked you, what is the old <laughs> and mm. what is the new? And I just, I mean, we, it's very clear. You don't have to be prophetic to see that we're in a new <laughs> uncharted territory right now. Yeah. And that is going to globally and spiritually look like something, but it's also going to individually look like something. So for you, Matt, it's looked like stepping down from this ministry leading that you've been in for years so I just want to encourage everybody listening to take some time as well what is the old for you what's he saying what's the new that he's calling you into it's, um, it can be hard and painful to let go of the old but it will always be exciting to come into the new so yeah well we are just want to thank you so much for being with us here today guys i know you're going to be inspired we're going to drop down um in the links below all the places you can get hold of matt and greater things international so um yep we will have that there for you and we just want to bless your day we know that you are loved that you have Mm -hmm. purpose that you have destiny that you have design and you are hearing god's voice and he is just longing to pour out all his love all over you. So we just want to bless you. Bless you, Matt. Have a great week, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thank you. To you guys too. See you later. Bye.